Hello, so this is going to be a little miniature series of how to create um, a feedback form for a training. So many of us in the social impact sector, we create training feedback forms all the time. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I've just completed my first round of students in the Mastering Form Design in Kobo Toolbox course. And as people end and they're, we're, we're thinking about, okay, completing final assignments, wrapping up, I'm creating a feedback form to get feedback for my course. But I was thinking about it and thinking every one of us all over the world, no matter what sector you're in, no matter what country you're in, we all do training. We all do training. We all educate other people based on something, okay? And that could be a free training. That could be a paid training. It really ranges, okay? And so I was thinking, actually, why not do a miniature series on how I am going to create a feedback form from scratch? So that is what this is. And this is step one. So I'm really going to go through this for my own um, information, but I invite you to follow along with your own training that you're doing and thinking through how could I create a training feedback form? I would love it if you leave me a comment below if you think I should be asking a different question or uh, something like that. So if I get the comments in time, I'll actually, um, yeah, bring them into uh, video number two. So definitely leave your comments and uh, go in the description below. I will leave a, um, a download link that you can go and download uh, this kind of brain dump from me. <laughs> I don't know if it would be helpful, but if it is helpful, go and download it and then use it and think about um, your own uh, your your own questionnaire. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. I'm gonna start off, we're in Word, just really, really basic. Like I said, I'm taking you behind the scenes a little bit in this video. Um, and really what you've gotta do, first of all, is get what's in your brain out on paper somehow, like get it out on the ground. And if you work in a team, this would be a great exercise to do um, kind of around a round table, have lots of post-its. What do you want to ask? What are the things you need to know? Um, so my guiding principle is I want this to be easy, fast, a low barrier to completing the questionnaire, okay? So I want, I want um, people to complete the questionnaire. I'm going to be using Kobo Toolbox to deploy my questionnaire, to deploy my form. So um, I need them to complete it and, and click that submit button for me to see the answers. So I need them to be able to get all the way through to the end. But I also need a fairly complete data set on, um, yeah, different things. So let's do this. Uh, I, I basically mapped out kind of seven steps. So um, always, always when you're creating a form, give a little intro and ask for consent. Then start with the details. Like what details do you need to know about who's filling in the form? That basically gives you a good kind of amount of information um, for disaggregating your data later on, okay? So, and this one we can come back to based on our data and like improve it in the future. Then I'm gonna ask about features and content. So features are things like, you know, did you like the format? Uh, did you like the handouts? Did you, you know, what what were the actual features that I had to design in the training itself? Did you like the venue? Did you like the food? Did you, you know, whatever your training is, um, you have to think about those features and, and get a little bit of feedback on those. Then you want to assess the content. Uh, so the content is more like, did you actually learn something from the content um, that was being created or being shared? Then you want to look at impact, okay? So, okay, e even if the features were all great and the content was all great and they thought you, you made a great training course, are they actually changing the way they work or they live based on what you've taught them, okay? Is it making any sort of change or transformation in their work or in their life? Um, so we want to assess that. And then finally, we kind of want to get into the future. like. Is there a way for us to continue working with that person? Is there a way for us to follow up and provide either more information, more service? Is there something that they would like to see changed or improved? Um, and then at the end, we could also get contact info if they're willing to include their name and email address or phone number that we can follow up with them later. 
And the thing is, we want to kind of ask them about what is what is already in the course and kind of assess what they liked about the course. Um, and then we want to think about with them what's missing, what could be improved. So features and content and impact is really about what is. This is what you did and this is the impact that it created. Future is really about what could be, what's missing, what are suggestions for the future and what could we do. So let's start with this intro section, okay? So we're gonna just make a little introduction about what the questionnaire is about, who it's for, how you're using the information, or how I'm using the information when I collect it, and the fact that I'm gonna keep it confidential or at least aggregated. Uh, then I'm gonna ask for their consent. Now I'm gonna ask, do they wanna participate in the survey? So if they do, then we'll continue. And can I use their data in aggregate? So I could, I, could I use their data in making like a pie chart and maybe sharing that pie chart um, in a report or on my website or with a donor or something like that. Um, so I wanna get their consent with that. Um, and I might think of other consent questions as I go along, but I know I need at least those kind of couple of core consent questions. And I'm gonna just make a note right up front. Um, so details, I think I need to know things like age, gender, their native language. So for me, that's important because I speak English, but most of the people I train are speakers of other languages. Um, pretty much everyone I train is, is speaker of, an, of a different language. Uh, so that's important to me. Um, what country people are coming from. So for you, that might not be country, maybe that's region or city. Um, so break this down based on, on what your setting is, on um, what role they play, what organization they work for, or maybe what school they go to, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I've made a little list of the things that I think are important to me. I might add or subtract some of those depending on um, how we go, but uh, that's kind of as I'm planning and putting notes down, that's where I've started. Uh, the type of student. So um, I want to know, are they beginner, intermediate or advanced in the technology that I'm teaching? OK, so obviously this is for me. What you want to do is um, kind of think about how would this relate to you? So what kind of student might they be? Um, uh, what type of sector are they from? So for me, the sector I'm interested in is like, I, I'm and I work with a lot of like social impact or um, organizations. So um, I kind of want to know, are they students? Are they from the humanitarian space? Are they from the development space? Are they from another kind of social enterprise uh, space, a not-for-profit, a for-profit, something else. Okay, so th those are the sectors that I'm interested in. If um, you're working in the humanitarian space, you might be looking at kind of the different clusters um, from the UN system and those kind of sectors. Um, you, yeah, you, if you're in the environmental space or uh, climate change space, like there's a lot of different sectors within that. So um, just think about how that would relate to yours, but that's kind of the, the list I've come up with so far. This could be improved. I'm not saying that this is, um, you know, be all and end all, but what I'm trying to do is get something down, get it out, see what works, see what doesn't, and then I can improve in the future. Okay, now I'm gonna move into that like features space, right? So uh, for this features, I had several features in my training and these are the kind of the things that I want to assess. So I want to assess the sign up and registration process. So if you're doing any kind of mobilization or registration, that kind of thing, um, you know, assess that. See, see what, um, how somebody kind of came to you, found out about you, and registered for your training. Um, I want to, I want to look at the onboarding and welcome um, space. I want to look at um, the assignments. I want to look at the videos. So mine was all online training, so it was all done through video. Um, so I want to ask a little bit about those. I wanna ask about the downloads. So people had um, cheat sheets they could download. They had uh, the actual video lessons they could download, uh, PDFs, work along, templates, that kind of thing. So I wanna assess that. I also wanna assess um, the quizzes. So after every set of five or seven lessons, I would give a quiz just to make sure people understood. So I wanna see, was it too easy? Was it too hard? Was it just right? You know, what did they think? Now, I can see all of the grades that people got on their quizzes, okay? So it's all online. But what I wanna get from someone is like, some people would have done the quiz two, three, four times to kind of make sure they get that passing grade. And I wanna know, was it worth the effort? You know, did they find like it was way too hard or were like, 
yeah, I did it four times, but actually it really helped me learn in the process. So, um, you know, just assess your assessment, you know, <laughs> um, think about all the features that you've created in that training and find out what people think about them. Um, so I'm also thinking about language and understanding. So uh, is there any trouble understanding the English? Would subtitles help? Would subti subtitles in another language help? Oh, I just thought of another one. Uh, oh, also, which language would be good? Um, would dubbing or voiceover help in another language? Um, and we could ask the same one, which language? Um, so then I can have a list of languages for that. Okay, so that's just an example of how my brain is also creating on the spot. And when you're coming up with a new questionnaire, definitely do this. Just get everything, all your ideas out on paper. And this isn't gonna look like the final version, um, but that's why it's from scratch. Um, live Zoom sessions. So uh, were they a good time? Uh, how accessible were they? Did you have any trouble? Uh, the timing of the training. So what I did is a six week training uh, from start to finish and each module was released each week. And so that was kind of the timing that I used. Uh, did people like that? Was that too fast? Was it too slow? Would people like access all at once or uh, over a longer period of time? So that those are the kind of things I'm trying to assess. And certification, um, are people clear on how it works? Do they like that process? How helpful is that? Okay, so that's kind of all of the features I wanna look at. Um, then I wanna go into the content. So in this kind of area, I just wanna know like what were their favorites, what were their least favorites, and like why. And for this, I'm really trying to pick up on like what did people really love and really not love about the course um, or about the training. And so I have a list here of like all of the different um, pieces of the training. Uh, that I was giving. And so for each question, I'll allow them to select up to five for favorite or not favorite. And then I'll just ask a little follow-up question. Okay, these were the ones you selected, why? Um, okay, then getting into impact. So basically I'm trying to figure out, has the training changed what you do at work? Has the training changed how you do data collection at work? Um, and if you had to finish this sentence, what would you say? So the main impact of this training in my work is dot, dot, dot. This one is a little bit harder because I'm trying to get a little bit more qualitative information. So it's not just like a drop down because I don't really know what the impact is yet. Okay, so this was a training. I ran it for the first time. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just trying to figure that out. Um, and would you recommend this course to someone else? Yes or no? So if another person is considering taking this course, who do you think this course is best for? Uh, so this is where I really want them. And this is like a, you know, choose all, select all, all that apply. So is it for m and &E specialists? Are they for program managers? Are they from people who have never used the technology before? A little bit, a lot, a consultant, uh, field-based, HQ-based, NGO workers, consultants, development workers, social enterprises. So. I want to hear what they have to say around who they really think it's geared to. I know who I geared it towards. But I'm trying to kind of get that feedback from uh, my students. So if another person is considering taking this course, what would you say to them to convince them that they should take it? Okay, so here I'm looking for a little bit of the positive validation around, okay, what would you say are the reasons that someone should take this course? Okay, so, um, this is not trying to collect like generic feedback uh, about, you know, should someone take it or not? I've already asked that. What I'm now trying to get is like, what are the reasons someone should take it? Um, then assessing for the future. So um, should there be a break in the middle? So it was six weeks. Should we do like three weeks and then a week break and then another three weeks or just keep going the full six weeks? Um, bringing it all together module. Would it help to have like a seventh module that's kind of um, going to bring it all together and help them kind of then apply it at work? So uh, that's another thought I've had for the future. Um, mem monthly membership, is there a way that we extend the community of the course and the training online into a monthly type of membership? Okay, so would someone be interested? 
Um, and then a week long intensive course rather than spread over six weeks. Would people be interested if it was just five days in a row? Boom, 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 boom. Um, they're able to take off a week from work um, and dedicate a full week to this training. Um, would that be really useful? So here are some of the suggestions other students have given. Um, which ones do you agree with and which ones you, would you prioritize? So I'm gonna have a whole list of questions. So I've had face-to-face -face, almost like um, uh, semi-structured interviews, pretty unstructured, but, but I had a list of guiding questions. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is just list a bunch of the recommendations that students had given to me one-on-one -on -one and just see what other people think as well. And I might allow um, allow them to enter uh, other suggestions as well. So I also want to get some other um, open open text feedback. Okay, and then what next? So do you want to take a Power BI course? Do you want to take an ODK briefcase course? Do you want to take a getting, or should I, should I have that getting started course in an expanded um, version? Do you want to know how to use the audit log? Do you want to do a course around 30 days of constraints to kind of uh, really build your, your understanding of constraints? Do you want to do 30 days of calculations? Um, and then finally, contact info. So name, number, and email address. Uh, so that is kind of how I have, like the first step I take in terms of getting through all of my thoughts around what do I want to collect data on, okay? So um, I think that that really useful uh, little list, I might put this into a checklist so that you can go and download this um, because I think it's really helpful. So intro, consent, details, features, content, impact, future, and contact info. Um, probably is really useful for anyone kind of creating a training questionnaire feedback form from scratch. Uh, so if you want a, a checklist, uh, I'll put a, a link in the description below. Um, and from here, where I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into something called a T-Logical template. Um, and the T-Logical template is something I, I developed myself and it's something I've been using with my own teams for quite a while, but it's kind of the halfway step between just a paper download dump onto paper <laughs> of like all, all the questions in your mind into a format where um, we can then transfer it easily into a digital form that's based on skip logic. Um, I think the big thing when you're coming up with questions from scratch is always be thinking about the indicators. So, I mean, this is a training I developed, so I'm assessing, I kind of innately know that I am looking to improve, get better, make sure this training works for people uh, better and better and better going forward. So I know that each one of these questions, so each, each feature that I'm going to ask a question about is a feature that I've designed in a certain way. And I am gonna take that feedback and um, use it to change it. So when I do some of my testing, my pilot testing with this form, I'm going to be just making sure that the data that comes back can actually help me improve that. And so if the data doesn't really help me, then uh, you know I would change it for the future. But that is just a first look. So the next step I will take you into is the T-Logical uh, framework, and then um, we'll put it, we'll be, be putting it into Kobo Toolbox. So that's it for um, the brain dump and actually creating the questionnaire. So we'll see you in the next step. This video is made possible by Mastering Form Design in Kobo Toolbox, my premier training course for humanitarians, NGOs, and social enterprises who need to really master their form design skills. If you're interested in joining the waitlist for when it opens up next, then please see the link in the description below this video. I'd love you to join the next cohort.